What is happening troops? So, welcome to another video. Today's video is going to be a leg day slash a day in the life of living the lifting life is what I'm going to call it, right? Because I live the lifting life now and it's amazing. Um, so basically, this video is again is going to cover my leg day and I'm going to run you through exactly what I do, how I do it, why I do it, and again some kind of diet stuff that I do throughout the day and just other stuff that I do that kind of involves, I guess, the lifting life um, of kind of staying fit, staying active and also staying in shape. So. When I say staying fit, the main thing I do to stay fit, fit is going to be like kind of one cardio session a week. But then as well as that, I kind of do a lot of work focusing on kind of actually building my physique. No, I wouldn't quite say I'm maybe bodybuilding the more I think about it, but I definitely am training for like aesthetics, trying to improve the way my physique looks. Because you know what? That's just like what I like today. So hey ho. But anyway, let's go get into the video. Cue intro. So, the first thing that I'd done today when I woke up was, first of all, drink some water, do you know where the bottle is? There, sir. So, drinking some water. Over here in Greece, I've been drinking a fucking shit ton more water because obviously it's so hot and you're sweating so much. Um, so, that's the kind of first thing I'd done. Then I had a little coffee. My bird basically made uh, a nice coffee with honey in it. It was actually pretty nice. It's not usually what I go for. I usually just go for like, actually a warm coffee with usually just either black or recently I've been having a wee bit of oat milk in it. Now, I know why the people say I'll never fucking touch cow milk or whatever, but the oat milk in it's actually pretty nice, so I'd recommend giving that a wee try um, if you haven't already tried it. Aye, so that's what I've done first, and then I've done some exercises basically, so I have some issues with my knee, right, so I get this kind of common knee pain, and it all kind of stems from my foot and my glutes, right, so this is something I'll cut, the glutes is kind of something I'll cover later, and my leg workout and why I'm doing it, etc, etc, but I basically gave some exercises by my physio to do to basically increase the arch in my foot and that should basically take away some of the knee pain. Now this knee pain isn't terrible but it definitely gets worse when I do stuff like squats um, especially the heavier I get in squats because my form goes a little bit lighter squats is perfectly fine because I can really focus on my form but the heavier I get in squats the more my form goes basically right. So basically I'm trying to fix this because of course I want to be able to squat because I do want big legs, believe it or not. Uh, I think something like 70% of people on my Instagram poll voted that I don't train legs, but the sad truth is I do quite a lot, I know. <laughs> but hey ho. Um, but now I need to go and get into some work with online clients. Just as I'm basically on that as well, right? If you don't know, uh, there's been some new subscribers that have came to the channel since the last two vlogs. I do do online coaching, so I either work with people one-to-one -one doing online coaching or people go my physique blueprint plan. Now the one-to-one -one coaching is of course a more in-depth thing where I actually make you custom plans, custom meal plans, custom training to follow, you get access to my app, we do check-ins weekly and much more. And this basically will ensure you progress as fast as possible, but if the online coaching may be a wee bit too expensive for some people and I totally get that, or maybe some people don't actually need the one-to-one kind of advice you just need a plan to go and follow and for the people they go onto my physique blueprint plan there's a seven day free trial link down below it's 15 pound a month and i guarantee you will you'll not be upset by it go try it seven day free trial and if you don't like it you can literally cancel it and you will not be charged and if you do get charged i will literally send you the money back because that's how much i fucking know it's, you're gonna love it right so anyway if you want to get interested in that you want to get a simple step-by-step -step guide to getting well fucking shredded check that out okay and following that, I'm going to go in and do some work with the clients who are on that right now. So anyway, bye bye. So, currently just making a little coffee. Um, we don't quite have a kettle in this house, so it's kind of a different setup. So I'll show you what it looks like. So that's what you do, you boil hot water in this little thing. And then you can just pour it into my coffee cup there. It's water to free. And kind of done a good wee bit of work there. Um, again, with the clients and stuff. Lauren Marie's done some work with our clients. If there's any girls out there looking for outfits, check out Lauren Marie's Instagram, style by Lauren Marie. Um, and right now we're kind of making like lunch. So just before, um, well, an hour ago I had a banana and a scoop of protein powder, just a kind of light breakfast because I don't get that hungry in the morning. So nice and light food. And so now I'm about to make an omelette with two eggs, 100 grams of egg whites, and 
two slices of bacon. So as you can kind of see, I tend to have quite a lot of protein at the start of the day, and like I've only had banana as my carbs so far, um, and that's kind of how I like to structure it. But usually I'll go for more protein earlier in the day, so later on in the day I don't have to try and eat like fucking 400 grams of chicken breast at night time because that's just no fun for anybody. Um, so that's something I would recommend, try and get more protein at the start of the day, it will just make getting your daily protein take much easier. So it's now quarter to five or something like that. I'm not already kind of both finished up her work for the day. So we're basically going to make some food and then we're going to head up the gym. So I'm going to have chicken and rice. Lauren Marie's going to have chicken and rice as well with some peppers. And then we'll go up the gym and go train legs. Which will be fun, so I'll take you along for that. I'm just kind of roughly count my calories ahead of time just because it's so much easier today rather than leaving it late at night. You need to try and figure out what you've got to have. So again, just kind of plan that all ahead, make sure that I'm going to basically be within my kind of range of calories and stuff like that. And here we go, chicken and rice, pre-workout meal. Pretty fucking banging. Don't know how that looks on the camera. So, the day may have seemed like a... Oh, here's the other place. The day may seem like a very slow day, but to be honest, since we've got here, we've been pretty go, go, go. Um, so it's kind of good to have a couple of wee days of sitting just and walking. It's been quite a quiet one, but again, it's probably quite needed as well. It's been 42 degrees outside today, so I think going out and doing it and that's pretty much a write-off unless you're going to the beach. But we're doing that at the weekend, so I Got to go eat this, go to the gym, clean shaved, nice and showered, ready to go to hit legs. We're on the Scotland tap, obviously, because you've got to represent. Pro tap butt as well, while you're training legs. Always keep the arms covered. Hides the small well, not the pump. But basically, it's even you see your arms in the gym, you've not got a pump, you're like, oh. So, long sleeves tap, or at least cover on the arms a wee bit, while you're training legs, will always make you feel better, right? So, um, I we've got to go head up here the new. Well, well, me and Lauren Marie are both matching shorts. Let me hand you what I show on your shorts. Look at that fitting piece of ass. <laughs> Sorry. Bye. Okay. Matching shorts, don't know if you can see that. Both Alphalete, both. Arctic camel, I believe they're called. But anyway, I gotta go and train legs. I guess I'll show you a wee bit of the fucking walk up that we need to make as well, and then I'll show you some of the leg exercises. Do you want to see Laura Marie leg like workouts? Comment them below and let us know if you do. It's happening. So, in the gym, repping the Scotland tap, bit to go train legs. Tunes in this gym are absolutely fucking banging, but so let's go get in to this workout. Try to get a few pictures just for fucking Insta or whatever. Um, but the thing is, see when you're training mostly glutes and hamstrings, you can't see much of a pump in your quad at all. So didn't really matter anyway. But anyway, that's the session kind of done. Now we're just going to head back and we're going to have fajitas for dinner. 
gonna have fajitas and then we're gonna sit and watch some TV. We've been re-watching Stranger Things, waiting for the new season to come out, so hi, that should be good. That was an army truck there. Yeah. Um, so we're just home and the wonderful Laura Marie is currently making uh, dinner. And she's a fucking legend because she always makes all the meals. And I love you so much, Hen. Okay. Um, so I'm just going to answer some of the questions I got in regards to the um, questions I put on my Instagram. Ask you about any questions about leg day. Um, just while I'm on that, look at this bruise on my chest. That came from doing a bit of self scraping. So if you know what that is, it's basically something to try and get a bit of uh, congestion out of muscle. But anyway, get, let's get on to it. So the first one is probably the best one for my good mate Dylan. It's happening, Dylan. If you're watching this, big calves gain secrets. So if you know me, I've got pretty much no calves whatsoever. Um, so the big calf gain secrets, right? First of all, calves are going to be mostly genetic. Um, if you have big calves, you've been pretty much blessed with big calves. Anybody I know who has big calves doesn't they train them, or they train them very little because they've always just have them. Your calves, as I say, are mostly genetic. The reason that is is because of the muscle fibres they are made up of, the way the calf works, right? So, for example, you have two types of muscle fibres: type one and type two. Type one is essentially a like a, a, a fibre designed to kind of go constantly, right? And type two is a much more explosive version. Hi, hello. I just had to Google that just to make sure I was saying that right because I sometimes mix up the order names. Type one is again, it's a basically a slow twitch type of muscle fibre that we call it, right? And it's more efficient over a long distance. So again, your calf, right? If you think of it, your calf is getting used so much throughout the full day. So it doesn't really need to be a big strong muscle, it just needs to be a muscle that's good at going consistently, right? So then you've got a type 2 muscle fibre, so that's going to be something that's more like, for example, your quads, your chest, your arms, shoulders, okay, whatever. Now, each muscle group has a mixture of them, but some have more of the other, and then some people also have more of the other as well. So some people, for example, Mo Farah will have more type 1 muscle fibres throughout his full body because he's basically just designed for fucking long distance running. Um, whereas if you look at, for example, Usain Bolt, he'll have more type 2 muscle fibres throughout his full body. Basically meaning he's much more explosive, that's why he's really fast at sprinting, okay? You'll probably find Usain Bolt probably isn't the best over long distance because of that his body type and Mo Farah probably isn't that fast over a short distance. So, in regards to muscle building, type 2 muscle fibres will grow much quicker and much easier. Type 1 muscle fibres will grow very little, if any at all. So, to grow calves, it's a really, really, really hard process. They're not going to grow that much. Sadly, I wish I could grow them much more. That being said, though, you probably can add an inch or two onto your calves if you really train them. And how I would personally train calves is, first of all, load not really heavy because they're carrying your full body weight, so they need to go heavy. Um, also, I would really focus on coming down really slow in the eccentric portion and put them into a fully stretched position because I'm not used to working in that all the time. Hold at the bottom for a wee second and then come up fast. So I would come down for one, two, three, get a full stretch, pause for one or two seconds and then come up fast. That would be my secret to getting big calf gains, but again, it's very, very hard to make big calf gains. The next question I got in regards to legs, well, in fact, in regards to the full muscles of your body is how much do you need to do to do enough? And that's a really great question, which has quite a long answer, but I'll gladly go into it for you. Now, first of all, this is going to depend on your training level. So if you're somebody very new to training, you're probably going to have to do about maybe 10 to 12 sets a week per muscle group to actually see adequate growth. That means uh, then moving on to kind of more intermediate, so somebody that's maybe been training for a year, two years, two years kind of mark, so it's going to be more intermediate, you're probably going to have to hit about 16 to 18 sets roughly, and then someday a wee bit more advanced, it's going to be about 20 plus sets. Now the kind of ideal number is going to be about 20, right, so somebody who's been training for say at least three years, four years, I would always try and hit them with about 20 sets. Somebody who's more advanced, they'll need to go kind of 20, just above 20, and you can spread that throughout the week. So for example, if you're trying to grow your quads, you would do, say for example, if you had two leg days, you would do 10 sets that are going to affect your quads one day, 10 sets are going to affect your squat, uh, your quads the next slide day. So 20 sets overall for the full week is going to be the best but again you have to adjust that depending on your training level. Next question I got was basically asking about how do you develop the teardrop muscle. So the teardrop muscle if you don't know is kind of the inside of version of your quad. Most likely you'll know what the teardrop muscle is. If you don't I'll put a picture up on the screen highlighting it right now actually. I'll put a picture up just now of my legs basically showing you roughly what that teardrop muscle is. And maybe I have a wee bit, maybe I don't. Let me know in the comments down below. 
I'd love to hear you all slagging my legs again. You sh- fucking shits. Um, but how you would develop the teardrop muscle is training your legs. First of all, um, unilaterally, meaning one leg at a time, right? So I find this helps develop your teardrop muscle much better as the quad muscles kind of have to work much more and they activate much more, stabilising that kind of one leg. Also, that being said, you can also do a leg extension, but while you're doing the leg extension, if you imagine this, your foot going straight up and down, you would tilt your foot out to the side and that's going to help you focus a little bit more on that sort of teardrop area. Aye. So that would be my kind of advice for focusing more on your teardrops. I do have one more question, and the the question wasn't quite clear what the boy was trying to say. Aiden Diamond, if you're listening, hello. Um, oh, there we go. I've just got he's just held back from right there. So I just had a chance to read over that question, and speak to Aiden there, um, and this is actually a pretty good question. So he's basically asking about an exercise I put up in my story last week or the week before, and it's how do you go about doing the exercise for your hamstrings on the rower machine so if you didn't see it basically on the machine you would do cardio on the rower there is a hamstring exercise you can do in that which I find really good to do at the end of workouts because it's kind of a burner if you will right but I just feel you get a really good burn and squeeze at the end of it and this obviously obviously doesn't mean it's a fucking good muscle exercise but it's good to kind of burn out the muscle at the end just to kind of take it to fatigue Anyway, how you'd basically do this, right, is fact, you know what, I'll just put the video up as I'm kind of running over this right now. Hopefully I can find it in my stories while I'm talking over this. So what you basically do is position yourself so your bum is essentially at the back of the rower machine. You would then put your heels onto the chair of the rower and dig your heels into it. From there, what you're going to do is you're going to elevate your hips until your hips are completely off the ground and there's a straight line coming down through your knees, through your hips, through to your shoulders. Then from there, you're going to hold your hips up nice and high and straighten your legs out as they're coming down. This is really, really hard to do as you've got to kind of control it all the way down. And you take that down to your legs are pretty much straight and then drive your heels back in towards your bum. At the same time though, you're raising your hips. Now this exercise is really great for your hamstrings for two reasons. Because it basically makes your hamstrings work over two joints, okay? So if you didn't know, your hamstrings are basically a muscle group that work, works over two joints. It's bilateral, uh, sorry, I can't remember the name. It's, it basically works over two joints, which most muscles do not works over your hips and at your knee so by doing keeping your hips up you're basically making your hamstrings work by extending your hips and then also by bending your knee and bringing your heels towards your bums uh, bum bums bum your hamstring is also working there so you actually get a peak contraction in your hamstring there and it's honestly awesome i would definitely recommend you try this out keep it to the end of the workout but because it's hard to add any resistance to this Therefore, meaning it's harder to make the exercise harder. So if you keep it to the end, it's usually body weight is pretty tough. But anyway, go check it out. And that is all for the questions. If you have any more questions, again, leave them in the comments down below and I'll be glad to help you out in the next video. Uh, how nice is this, right? So we've been landed with the fucking, the cutest wee... Host. Host ever, right? Shout out to fucking wee Poppy. I think that's her name. It's either her or a man's name, but Poppy. Ah. No, she's Maria. Actually, Maria. Right, well, Maria and Poppy, man, what absolute legends. Look at this, what they've gave us. Now, it might not look mega appetising, but it smells nice. What is it? What you call it? I don't know. But Something like for her. Party, isn't it? Uh, it looks like a tart, man, but oh, mate. Little does she know that we like to watch our waistline, but you know what, mate? Life's too short. No to be trying fucking cake that you're wonderful host, geez, you man. Um, this actually ties in really nicely with the video Living the Lifting Life because at the end of the day, right, wee things like that, like a once in a lifetime opportunity, you can't even say no to that because at the end of the day, what's it going to matter? I mean, that's however many fucking calories, it doesn't matter. You've got to enjoy wee things like that um, and they'll be too hard on yourself all the time. Unless you're maybe doing it for a certain reason, you've maybe got a strict reason to go and do it, aye. But if you're somebody who's training just to be healthy, have a nice life, whatever, and you've no got some sort of stick, uh, strict dedicated fucking goal that you need to stick to, enjoy things that are like that in life. Um, I think that's quite a good wee thing to say there. So if you're somebody who's maybe dieting, you're always worrying about your physique and doing whatever, let yourself live a little bit um, because life's too short not to be enjoying wee cakes like that. Hello. So just finished that wee cake. Well, I mean, how good was it? Amazing. It was pretty fucking class. Thank you again, me Poppy, if you're watching this, you're probably not because she speaks French or something. But, I <laughs> know, But, uh, aye, that was class. So, let's just end the video there on that nice note. The vid- that fucking Kate King was amazing. Our hosts are legends. I day train legs. And I'm fucking massive, bro. And so are you. 
Anyway, peace out. If you want to get huge, check out the Seek Blueprint 7 day free trial down below. And if you're not already, please subscribe, like, tell your friends, and just fucking be a legend. Bye bye.